talking about America. America is clearly, uh, one of America's code names is clearly Egypt. I mean, you've got cities in America, Alexandria, Cairo, Phoenix, um, and a, you know, a whole slew of, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's many, many, many more. Those are just three of them. All right. Those all go back to ancient Egypt. All these obelisks that they've been, that they've erected over here, that goes back to ancient Egypt. Okay. Bow link goes back to ancient Egypt. All right. Stockings, fishnet, pantyhose goes back to ancient Egypt. Okay. Beer goes back to ancient Egypt. If you look at, at Egypt, if you look at Egypt on a map, Egypt is split by what? The Nile River. What splits America? The Mississippi River. I mean, I mean, there's so many parallel. I mean, you could do a, a three-hour lesson on that, right? This isn't talking about uh, 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 ancient Egypt. This is talking about spiritual Sodom and Egypt going into Revelation the 11th chapter. America is also known as Egypt now, okay? Um... So, so the Lord is going to bring his people out with, with what? It says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. That's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the right hand man of the Yahweh. Right? His right hand man and his stretched out arm is Yahweh Shai. Because the Most High don't get his, off his throne for nothing. The Most High gives orders. Okay, kings give orders. Okay, and he's about to order and command his only begotten son to go and get his elect lamps. Man. All right. And to destroy this damn place, and to and to start uh, to begin establishing the kingdom of heaven on this earth, it says, "Egypt shall mourn," verse twelve, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High Power shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hell, and with a fearful consolation. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. That's right. Now let's jump out of there. Yeah, woe to the world and them that dwell therein, right? Because this devil is fixing to come down on you people having great wrath. So let's do uh, Revelation. Let's get to Revelation 12. All right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So he's getting ready to come down with great wrath. That's again why you see all these draconian measures and mandates and laws and policies being in, uh, being enacted, being signed into law. Okay, because that's part of him coming down with great wrath. There is going to be no room for dissent. You will not be able to uh, have an opposing view all right, you, you, won't, you won't be able to um, um, to demonstrate. You won't be able to march. You won't, if, if you come against him in his construct in any way, shape, or form, you will be thrown into prison at minimum and most likely put to death. All right, unless you just happen to be one of those people that is somehow gets off the grid. But even but even, even if you do that, man, if you're not part of the election, you're going to be destroyed anyway. All right. So that ain't no damn guarantee, man. You know, you know last week we was talking about uh, these super rich preppers, you know, the, the the Dukes of Edom, you know, building these bunkers. Man, they, they ain't got nowhere. They, they can hide for a minute. But then, <laughs> you know, it's going to be uh, all for naught at the end of the day. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it so the he is talking about jacob jacob is a representation of, at the end of the day of the most high's elect all right the 12 tribes are right, beginning with the men of the lord so that's why it says he shall be saved out of it because again the two-thirds are not going to be saved out of this a time of jacob's trouble man okay this is all all these agendas all these plans that these elites have ultimately they're they're uh, uh directed towards you man Okay, they want you out of the way. Okay? They want you out of the way once and for all. See, the Lord has an election. Okay? And the Most High, matter of fact, Yahweh Shai said it. If you're part of the elect, man, no, no man can pluck you out of, the, out, out of uh, uh, his hand. Matter of fact, here it is right here. Uh, John chapter 10 and verse 27. I'll start in 26. 
But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, verse 27, and I know them and they follow me. So if you can hear this, uh, if you can hear the truth, if you can dance to this new song, okay, then you're one of y'all by Shmi Al-Shah's sheep, man. All right? It says, my sheep hear my voice, verse 27 again, and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's right, man. So, ever how it goes, he can't get rid of uh, the elect, man. Okay? You, there is no destroying the Lord's election. Okay? At all. Terrible times coming, man. The day of the Lord, you know, Jacob's trouble. And it's, it's, a, it's a, 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 I mean, you know, once again, we um we talk about it all the time. It sound like broken records out here, but you know, again, we're gonna keep prophesying, Lord willing, man. The scripture talks about being occupied in prophecies. All right, Sirach, 39th chapter. You know, we're supposed to be occupied in these prophecies. So, you know, week in and week out. You know, you, you know, you listeners and you, you who are learning, sincerely learning, you know, you, you're probably like, well, I heard that scripture last week. Or I heard that scripture a couple hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to keep on hearing it, too. All right. Because that's the time we're in prophecy. All right. Going into the day of the Lord. Book of Joel. Chapter 2. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And you've got even even those of, of, of the other nations that are prophesying the end, that are talking about the MOTB, that are talking about so-called Jesus coming back. They're really talking about Yahweh Shai because Jesus Christ don't exist. His name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, there was no one in Rome in the earth 2,000 years ago named Jesus. Okay? But you've got men and women of the other nations talking about these things. And children. You know, so the Lord is pouring out his spirit, man. It says, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And who are his servants? The prophets of the Lord, man. And he continues, how is he pouring out his spirit? He's pouring out his spirit with all this teaching that we're uh, 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 that we have access to, man. You know? That's how he's born out of spirit. His, his whole, he, he sent Rakakwadas into this earth in these last days and woke us up. And he continues, the Wadi Yabba Shemiah continue to pour your spirit upon us, man. All right? Keeping these scriptures in our minds, in our hearts. Okay? It says, I will shoot, and I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And that, you know, pillars of smoke, obviously, and fire is going in. So when the nukes are coming, that's what's getting ready to happen, man. The nukes are coming. They've already been shot. Again, we say it all the time. This is just playing out in the physical realm, all right, in this era, all right? It says, The sun shall be turned into darkness, verse 31, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Yahweh, comes. That's right, man. And it shall come to pass, verse 32, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, Yahweh, shall be delivered. You got to go through Yahweh Shai. You can't get to the Father directly without a mediator. All right, it says, For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. So who's going to be saved, Bo Camelone? The Israelites. Okay, 144,000 men, the ruling body who will be underneath Yahweh Shai and King David, Malak Dawada, and a remnant. Okay, it says, For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord Yahweh has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord Yahweh shall call. So again, he's calling a remnant. A remnant are gonna are, are gonna receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash, wake up, all right, and, and, and trust on Yahweh Shah and come into the truth. All right. Well, you know, that reminds me of something in Acts, because you still got vocab again, vocab Malone and his you know, his, his uh, men of, of his, you know, you know of his ilk all right um his his flunkies is still talking about how the gentiles can make it 
how the natural Gentiles can make it. How is it that it says in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, that the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way? If, if he's the destroyer of the Gentiles, what is he, the destroyer of the Gentiles, also their savior? No. He's going he's to call the Israelites who are in a Gentile state of mind back into the sheepfold. Okay? Those are the Gentiles. And we just read it in Joel. And in Acts, Peter repeats Joel. And who's Peter talking to? I'm just going to get right to the point. He starts quoting Joel in verse 16 of Acts chapter 2, Peter, right? On the day of Pentecost. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to reread because he quotes it verbatim. And I just read it. But then verse 22 says, Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, again, Peter quoting the prophet Joel. It says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Now, why does it say that? Because it starts with the men. All right, it goes, the, it goes, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the man, the woman, and the child. All right, so this message is to you men first, man. All right, a lot of you men out here are effeminate. You become effeminate. You become weak. All right, you've become docile through the GMOs that Esau has been feeding you, which the scripture says, that, you know, we eat our bread defiled among the Gentiles. So that's prophecy in itself. Through the water you drink. You know, through through the through the through the propaganda that you that you are fed, through the television and and, 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 and music and and, and, and and movies that you expose yourself to, you become weak, pathetic, man. But it starts with the men. Men get it, then they go to their woman if they have one. Then they go to their children with this. All right, that's how it goes, man. But he said, "Ye men of Israel, hear these words." So that whole sermon, okay, that Peter is preaching. Okay, was the two the men of Israel first, and then the rest of the nation, the, men, the, the women and children. Okay, that's who it's for, man. It says, "Ye men of Israel, hear these words: Yahweh Shai Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High, among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which the Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know." All right, then it goes on to um, keep on going down in the chapter. It goes on to, I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 36. It says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the Most High have made this, that same Yahushua whom ye crucified, both Lord and Amasiah. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? All right, we know we have blood on our hands. We know we help deliver the Lord to the Romans. We know we, we had a hand in his death. What what can we do? Because they were pricked in their heart, man. They were pricked in their mind upon hearing these words that Peter was speaking to him on the day of Pentecost. Okay? They were all Israelites. All right? So what did, what, did, what did Peter say to him? It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Masiah. And that don't mean you have to be dunked in water. Okay? That all water, that all water uh, uh, baptism, that you're not wicked if you if you go and dunk yourself in, in water, okay, and, and kind of pat, pat, pattern yourself after what Yahweh Shai did, but that's not that's not what it's talking about, all right? Baptized, man. Baptized, ba baptized by fire. When you hear this word, because this word is fire, all right? And it's the word that cleanses you, man. All right, Ephesians, the fifth chapter goes in that. I believe it's Ephesians chapter five. The water is what? The water is the word. The water is also like in the fire, but water is... Uh, the word is also like in the water. And that water, when you hear this uh, a word, that that's what washes you clean, man. I remember Yahshua himself even said, you were met and thou made clean by the word which I have spoken unto you. Okay? It says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahshua Masiah, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? For the promise is unto you.